All right, in this quick video, I'm going to use uh, the FET, the physics uh, simulations put out by University of Colorado Boulder to show you a little bit of information about the, um, about the different models of the atom, just to give us a visual. Uh, just as I went to this web page quickly at the beginning to show you, this is an excellent web page. They have lots and lots of great simulations. Stuff that's sort of fun to play with, but all of it uh, often really good in terms of understanding um, a variety of stuff about physics. Anyways, the one that I'm specifically interested or chemistry, the one I'm specifically interested in right now was this one uh, based on the model of the atom. So in a sense, this is almost like a uh, gold foil experiment. But also we can imagine that not only are they taking into account whether or not the particle is scattered at a different in a different direction, but they're also sort of looking at if the energy of the incoming atom is used to excite the atom, then the um, then what color of light might be produced. So let's turn on our gun and let's see what's going to go here. So here's white light coming in, all different colors, and what we can see is the vast majority of the light that's coming in is leaving in the same direction it went, so the vast majority of these atoms are empty space. So this, and then every once in a while when one does get absorbed, we see that it might fire off in a different location. Probably to make the simulator more interesting, they made this happen a lot more often than would happen in any sort of real experiment. But uh, watching one in 8,000 go off at an angle might be awfully boring when you wouldn't see much happening. So here, obviously, they've ramped up how much interaction there's going to be. So let's go maybe a little bit through history here and see the different... Uh, different ideas of what the atom was and see how they might have interacted. So back John Dalton all the way back to when we use the law of definite proportions or the way that things react in fixed ratios to come up with the idea that there must be atoms or there must be particles. All the way back for the molecular theory where we say all matter is made up of atoms. Then this is the most basic kind of atom that we had. He thought it was just like a billiard ball, and if stuff hit it, it could bounce off of it. Now here's our plum pudding model. Here we see those small blue raisin-like thing from our raisin bun, and if it gets hit by some radiation, it can bounce back and forth and vibrate in there, and then later it can spit that radiation back out. And we see this brown goo outside of it, and in that brown goo, we can recognize that as the bulk positive material that they thought existed before Bohr. So then here's the Bohr atom and we can see, or sorry, the Rutherford atom. We can see the obvious problem with the Rutherford atom is we have this dense nuclear core and this electron going around the outside of it, but we, we have no understanding of here is uh, why that electron doesn't spiral right in and cause the kaboom explosion that I mentioned before in a previous video. So there's your dense nuclear core, the red, and the electron spiraling down. So without really explaining why, we can go to the Bohr atom and we can understand what's happening here. First of all, you can see now Bohr says that there's only certain regions that this electron is allowed to be in. And if it gets hit with uh, light the right way, it'll pop up to a higher spot and then eventually it'll fall back down spitting out radiation. So here it is in the lowest level and here it's being kicked up. Oh, a little slow there. There it's being kicked up two levels and we can see now there would be two possible colors of light that be, could be given off when it's coming back down and it made the jump all in one and spat out that light. Here we have it where to go way up there. Uh, and so we can imagine it transitioning in between these allowable regions. It only make the transition if the color of light coming in is the right energy. That's why we say light will only absorb, or materials will only absorb certain colors of light. And then as it makes its way back down to the center of the atom, it can only spit out certain colors of light associated with the transitions between these allowable rings. The next couple examples here in the simulator, and I'm just going to really quickly show them, I'm not going to discuss them in detail, show 
some of the reasoning behind why these allowable energies might exist. So here we can see from the de Broglie model of the atom, the idea, did I get into de Broglie? It doesn't look like it, did I? Huh, we'll just click around here and see if we can get it. It doesn't seem to want to put that up. Hold on a second here. Oh, we appear to be frozen here. Hold on a second, see if I can get this going here. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know what's going on with the simulator here, why it's not working properly. I did show the three levels that I wanted to show for this video. So maybe I'll make a second video at some other time where I can go back in, get this working properly, and uh, show you what, uh, show you why or discuss why the, there are only certain allowable energy levels. But that's not really grade 11 chemistry, which is what I'm making these videos for now anyway, so I can leave that be for now.